welcome to you. I'm Hayley Palmer. Really good to have you here with me on the show this evening, especially as we are joined by Kevin Sim. And we'll be catching up with him after this. Kevin, it's great to have you on the show. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure to have you here. And so obviously we're in lockdown. What have you been up to? Um, I've been doing a lot of recording and stuff. Um, yeah. My kids obviously um, have been at home, so I've been doing a lot of homeschooling. And um, <laughs> That's tricky, isn't it? <laughs> it's really tricky, yeah, especially when you've got <laughs> two kids, you know, that are different, oh, different ages. But, uh, yeah. but it's been good, though. We've had loads of time together, so that's been a positive side of it. Yeah, I think that really is a positive, isn't it? I've spoken to a lot of people and they said it was, you know, a tough life, touring and everything. So actually when you do stop, you really can spend precious moments with your family, can't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, obviously I've missed working a lot and it's nice to have the balance of having the both of them. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, I mean, if there's one positive thing, you know, and there's not very many positive things come out of lockdown and the coronavirus um, <laughs> <laughs> pandemic, yeah, that's definitely yeah. the one thing. Yeah, yeah, no, I totally agree. Well, we're going to play out uh, All Your Good Friends. Uh, now, this was your debut single, wasn't it, Kevin? Yeah, this was the single, uh, you know, that I did. It was kind of like the winner's single from The Voice. So, yeah, my, my first single on my own, I guess. Yeah, well, we love it here on the show. Uh, so we're going to play out the video and Kevin and I will see you after this. So, Kevin, I want to rewind because you have a phenomenal voice. Did you kind of always know that you had that voice? Because, I mean, I've always known that I've had a really bad voice, but <laughs> it's a real gift that you've been given. Um, no, I didn't. I mean, I used to just want to be a footballer, to be honest, when I was younger. So yeah. I only really started singing when I was about 15 or 16. Ah. Um, and I guess I've been quite lucky, really, I suppose, just in the way that I've just, um, you know, I've not, I've not really had singing lessons and things like that. I've just kind of... Wow. You know, yeah, it must have just been a gift. It must have been, but yeah. <laughs> I'm only kidding. Yeah. But no, um, <laughs> I just, you know, I've had to work hard to, to get it to where I suppose it is now. You know, I, when I first started singing, I wasn't wasn't great or anything. So, um, you know, it's just like anything, you know, a lot of practice. And, and hopefully now, yeah. I'm at, you know, people think I'm all right. Oh, we think you're more than all right. We've seen your Instagram posts and they're just phenomenal and definitely keeping us going uh, throughout lockdown. And I guess kind of you got to that stage where you started uh, playing in the pubs and the clubs, didn't you? And is this right that you were on Stars in Your Eyes? Yeah, I was on Stars in Their Eyes when I was 16 or 17. Maybe I remember a little bit that older. show. <laughs> yeah, it was, it's mad. I mean, I've done some pretty cool things, to be fair, in my career. And, you know, that was definitely like one of the really cool things, because back in the day when I was younger, you know, Stars in Their Eyes was a massive TV yeah. show. So it was it was cool to do that. Yeah, I can remember not missing any of the Stars in Your Eyes shows. They're absolute throwback. Uh, and talking of throwbacks, let's mm. talk Liberty X, because... This really was my era, Kevin. I can remember watching all the pop star shows and I just remember uh, just loving the show and then just seeing uh, just a little video, you guys with the canes and everything, and I just thought it was the best thing ever. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was pretty cool. I mean, for us, obviously, it was, you know, it made, made our careers as a band, really, that yeah. song. So, um, you know, it was it was, we got really lucky, you know, with that song and... Just everything came came together really, like you know the video, the lever and the lycra and whatever else, and and just a brilliant <laughs> pop song. So we were really lucky to 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 record that song. It really, you know, like I say, it, it made our careers as a band really. Yeah, well, it's still one of my favourite uh, songs today. I've been playing it in lockdown because I think lockdown is that time when you just kind of get your whole music collection out. So uh, it's a real favourite. Here it is, uh, just a little, which reached number one in two thousand and two. Now, Kevin, I want to talk to you about The Voice UK because I've spoken to a lot of people on the show and a lot of people have auditioned for it and uh, it's been a bit of a bad career move. But for you, winner, I mean, that's just incredible. And also, it must have been quite a brave decision for you, mustn't it? Um, you know, I, yeah, I suppose, you know, I mean, it was, it was definitely nerve-wracking. There's a lot of, you know, a high element of risk, if, especially if you come from... 
from a pop group or something that's that's done something before. Yeah. And, and like you say, you know, there have been people over the years that have done it and, and, and you know, not got through the sort of blind audition stage. So it was you know, it was a huge risk and I kind of knew what I was letting myself in for and, and, you know, the fact that if I didn't get any turns, you know, I, I might have a bit of egg on my face, but it seemed like a way, you know, a risk worth taking at the time and thankfully it, it paid off. Yeah, it definitely paid off. And I just think it's brilliant when they turn around in their chairs. I don't know how you keep going, Kevin, because I feel like I'd be that person that would be like, yay, and just kind of forget my words, but you really keep it together. Yeah, inside I definitely wasn't keeping it together. It was it was the weirdest experience of my life. I mean, everything. I felt was like it? I was singing out of key. I felt like I was singing out of time. No. Yeah, honestly, it was it was the most nerve wracking thing I've done in my whole life. And I guess like when I saw a few the judges turn, you know, I, I kind of felt great. You know, amazing, brilliant. I'm not, you know, I've kind of dodged a bullet, but at the same time, I thought, you know, I can't mess up the rest of the performance. So it was important for me to sort of make sure the rest of it was, was decent. Yeah. And Chandelier, that's not an easy song to sing. I can imagine being an unsinger, but you know, that's quite tricky, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I kind of knew, you know, I kind of thought I've always been the sort of person that I, I want to push myself like vocally and, and, and always try and sing sort of the more, the more difficult songs. And I thought, with the voice, it was kind of one of those I had to either go big or go home. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, it's there's no good, it's no good, especially at the blind audition stage. You know, playing it safe and do a song that you're comfortable with. I just thought, if I can nail this, then there's no way they can't turn for me. And if if I don't nail it, then well, you know, we'll see what happens. <laughs> well, you absolutely smashed it, and you won the voice, which must have just been the best feeling. Uh, ever. Um, we're going to play out uh, your version of Chandelier that I know you've done in lockdown. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I just um, was obviously like social media is kind of like the, the big thing during lockdown. You yeah. know, there's no other way to really reach people that, you know, follow you and, and come to watch you perform. So I've kind of done quite a lot of videos and stuff over lockdown. And this yeah. is one of them. This is one of them. Well, just phenomenal. The most amazing voice. Check this out. It's Kevin singing Chandelier. Party girls don't get hurt, can't feel anything When will I learn to push it down, push it down I'm the one for a good time, call phone is blowing up Ringing my doorbell, feel the love, feel the love One, two, three, one, two, three, drink One, two, three, one, two, three, drink one, two, three, one, two, three, drink Throw them back till I lose count I'm gonna swing from the chandelier From the chandelier Now, this is really exciting news to me when I found out that you are now the lead singer of Wet Wet Wet, aren't you, replacing Marty Pello? Yes, I am, yeah. <laughs> and I've got to ask, how did this actually come about? That's what we all want to know. Um, I, it's really just quite random. I, I got an email off the manager. Um, right. I was just playing football with my little boy on, on the, in the uh -huh. garden. And I, as parents do a lot of the time, you have your phone on you and you check your emails. And I had a, a, an email just saying, um, I'm Wet Wet Wet's manager and would you fancy having a chat? And I thought, well, why? <laughs> what about? <laughs> um, and, and anyway, I, he come back and he said, we're, we're looking for a new lead singer. Marty's uh, not part God. of the band anymore. And would you fancy giving it a try? So I was like, well, yeah, why not? I kind of, again, it was, you know, 
one of those things where it, it wasn't like immediate where I was like, yeah, oh yeah, I'll do it. Definitely. You know, I did think, well, there's going to be a bit of a backlash at some point from, you know, diehard Marty fans and, you know, it's, but it's, you're not trying to replace him, are you? I mean, obviously, you're your own singer in your own right, aren't you? Yeah, of course. But it's just it's like anyone, you know, Marty's a big, you know, got a big fan base yeah. and stuff. And you, and you, you know that it's, you're never going to get 100% of the people, you know, that support the band and support the, the lead singer, you know, the kind of the focal part of the band. You know, when, when someone new comes in, it's, it's, it's never going to be sort yeah. of a unanimous um, <laughs> rejoicing. But... Um, so I kind of had that in my head and I thought, do I really want to put up with that? Uh, and then I thought, you know what? Yeah, why not? Let's go for it. I like a challenge. Yeah. yeah, it's such a great opportunity. And was it kind of like an audition kind of thing that you had to do to get into the band? How did that come about? Um, kind, kind of, but not not at the same time. I mean, they obviously right. asked, they asked for me to come and, and see them. So I, kind of, I went down to Graham, who's the bass player. I went to see him, went down to his house and had a chat and stuff and then... We um, and then we we arranged a day to go up to Glasgow and and jam like ten songs. So I learned like ten songs and I played with the band and and then they yeah. gave me a call on the way back home. You know, said asking <laughs> if I'd be in the band. So it kind of yeah. was, but I wasn't. It wasn't like the voice. I wasn't super nervous yeah. or anything like that. I was just yeah. It was just quite, quite a good. <laughs> Nothing good, compared good to that feeling on there. Yeah, but I no. mean, did you grow up listening to the wet, wet, wet songs? Because I know me personally, I just, I mean, I love all their songs. They're great driving tracks for me, um, but they're classics, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, they are. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I did. I listened to some of the songs. I mean, "Good Night Girl" was a was was a song I've Aww. always thought was amazing. Oh, wow. And uh, yeah. temp- temptation. I mean, love is all around. Is obviously the big massive one, but yeah, you know, it kind of got a bit boring after sixteen weeks at number one or whatever it was. Um, <laughs> but so, so yeah, I did listen to them as a as a you know as a kid and stuff. But I w- you know, yeah. I was I was more like Oasis and Blur and Radiohead oh. and things like that. They're they're all my oh, sort right, of got it. ocean colour scene. It. So it wasn't oh, like yes. you know, I wasn't like oh. One day I want to be in wet, wet, wet. But, you know, at the same time, I'm very grateful for the opportunity. It's such an incredible opportunity. Well, we hope to come and see you on tour. Obviously, we just don't know when things are going to get back. But um, do let us know here on the show, Kevin, and uh, we will keep everyone at home posted uh, because we'd love to see you in that. Uh, Meanwhile, we're going to play out uh, Love Is All Around, uh, you singing at a concert. Um, Just phenomenal. Check this out. Love is all around me, and so the feeling grows. 
Hi, I'm Kevin Sim, and this is Wishing I Was Lucky with Wet Wet Wet. Oh uh-huh. 
was love Keeping me warm night and day When I need you I just close my eyes And you're right here by my side Just close my eyes and I'm with you And all that I saw wanna give you It's only a heartbeat away now I want to talk about your charity single uh, with John Adams and Matt Johnson. Now I know this was at Christmas, Stay Another Day, but I feel like this is such a cool version of the song. I really wanted to play it out on the show. How did this all come together? Um, well, I did quite a lot of stuff, um, acoustic covers for Spotify and things like that. Um, and Matt Johnson, who was a lad that was actually in One True Voice yeah, um, from Pop Stars The Rivals. Oh, I remember them. Yeah, yeah, he's he's kind of like he's done really well with Spotify and he's he's done his own label and stuff and I've been working with him for for years. So um we just decided at Christmas time um to there's quite a few a couple of charities that we support throughout the year and obviously with this year it's been yeah. difficult to do very much. Yeah. Um so we just thought it'd be cool to to put a song out and we could try and raise a bit of awareness for these charities. Um I was supposed to be like running the Manchester Marathon for the NSPCC this year and obviously things like that didn't go ahead so it just seemed like no. something that we could actually sort of do um, that didn't involve you know 40,000 people yeah. getting together and running a, a race sort of thing yeah yeah well it's for an incredible cause uh, let's check out the video it's a lovely version enjoy and we'll see you after baby if you got to go away don't think I could take the pain Won't you stay another day? Oh, don't leave me alone like this Don't you say it's the final kiss Won't you stay another day? Don't you know Come too far now Just to go and try to throw it all away Thought I heard you say you love me That your love was gonna be here to stay I've only just begun to know you All I can say is won't you stay Just one more day Say now Baby, if you got to go away Don't think I could take the pain Won't you stay another day Don't you say it's the final kiss Won't you stay another day I touch your face while you are sleeping And hold your hand, don't understand what's going on Good times we had Return to haunt me Though it's for you All that I do seems to be wrong Say now, say now Baby, if you got to go away Don't think I could take the pain Won't you stay another day Oh, don't leave 
but it's been such a pleasure to have you on thank you and uh, what have you got moving forward have you got any little plans that you can tell us about here on the show uh well we're currently writing an album uh, wet 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 so we've we've got that hey. scheduled for july or something like that but we've not quite finished it so yeah so we, we're writing from home obviously remotely and trying to we transfer yeah. stuff backwards and forwards so it's it's, it's been it's been fun in the middle of um, obviously <laughs> technology homeschooling <laughs> and all that as well but um so yeah that and yeah. i'm releasing more sort of um acoustic covers and things like that so yeah we love those i saw another one on your instagram i think it was dance with my father it was just beautiful yeah the great song and um yeah i put i can't believe that actually i put it on all, all my things and obviously it touches a nerve with a lot of people it's, it's an important song to a lot of yeah. people so um yeah that's it's a great song yeah, well, do keep those coming because we really enjoy uh, listening to those. Uh, we'll put details on the screen below of how you can follow Kevin on Instagram. Uh, do keep us posted on everything regarding uh, Wet 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 that's really exciting. Uh, but thank you so much. We'll let you go back to homeschooling uh, or watching Netflix. <laughs> but thank you so much. It's Kevin Sim, everyone. Thank you. Cheers, Ellie. Oh, we've now come to the end of the show. But a huge thank you to the brilliant Kevin Sim for being a wonderful guest this evening and to you at home for supporting the show. It's so appreciated. Thank you. Now, I will see you same time, same place next week. This last song by Wet Wet Wet, I want to dedicate to Emma from the Isle of Wight, who I know is a massive fan. This one's for you, Emma, and I'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.